Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Woodwork in Wisdom. So here we are. It's Wednesday. We're going to continue from where we left last week. So last week, we you enjoy it? I'm hoping you did. We looked at cutting your mortise. So simple. And it's weird. People are off put about cutting mortise and tenons by hand. Why? If you don't have the fancy machines or that sort of thing, maybe you don't want to make any furniture because you think this is long-winded to make a mortise and tenon. Now, I cut the rest of the joints when we're finished with you. So last week on Thursday, that's what I did Thursday morning. One leg, when I did the last leg, took me 12 minutes from start to finish of laying out to cutting the joint. Done. 12 minutes. Not actually that long if you don't have those specialized machines as a mortise. A lot of investment as a machine. So today, we're going to cut the tenon. So our tenon, a bit like what we have on here, going to cut it out. Now, let's just lay this. Look, we've got there fits into our hole, so all right. So we have our mortise, you can see the slots come through. Now these are done as something like a table leg, chair leg. Your mortise and tenon joint actually is the most commonly used woodworking joint out there. Every window frame, if it's wooden traditionally, sash windows would have mortise and tenon, table legs, mortise and tenon, chairs, incorporate mortise and tenon. But then if you start really looking into it, things like Chichester Cathedral, all the woodwork in behind and everything else. 15th century, this is. Mortise and tenon joints. So quite astounding on how long this has been used, how traditional this is as a joint. So, And they didn't have fancy machines, all by hand. So with us, going to lay out and do our tenon. As we said, we've got our mortises. We cut those out. I think they look all right. You can see we did. I've done two legs because the idea of this is we've got to kind of join it together. Our tenon, just going to hold this here. So actually on our tenon, flip it over might be easier. We have the tenon. We have a haunch. That's going to fit the haunch that we did on the mortise. So you have a tenon haunch, a mortise haunch. You get your shoulders across here. Now I've got a shoulder on either side of this. That shows you better. Flip it right round. We got one on here. That makes it, if you like, a little bit more to tricky to get right because actually you've got to get both of those dead level to fit your hole and line up so you don't get a gap all right so let's do that marking outfit then going to make my life easier i'm going to put this in the vise just to there all right now on here if you like for you guys i've got face edge I have my numbers for my joints that correspond to the leg numbers. If you again, if you watch what we did last week, you will see that. Just grabbing selection of weapons now, it seems like. So last week we used mortise chisel. A little bit bigger, come back in. All right, got to walk back over. Long way down on the bench this week. So we have our mortise chisel. We used mortise gauge last week. So traditional two-pin one. Got the more modern Veritas one that I picked out. Set this up already. Why? Just to save us a little bit of time. So actually on here, Ben, I expect if you go overhead, let's have a quick look. I have, I'm going to use the pencil. I have two cutting wheels. One there, one up on here. The chisel, I can set to those. So the one on the top, there's a flat edge that I'm up against now. The one on the bottom here is actually flat there. So I can bring that directly in place. I've then tightened the collar which is down on here. Then I can slide the whole lot forward and back. And what I wanted to do with this is get it central. So to get it central, you test it. All right, from either side until you get it right. And you adjust it. The reason I've set it all up, it took me four or five minutes to get it right the other day to get it exactly spot on where I wanted. So I'm trying to save a little bit of time on this. So everything I mark out, laid off at the face edge. Next thing I need, my glasses. Got that. Other thing we're going to want, cutting gauge. So we're going to use both really quickly. So the cutting gauge is single wheel. I want to go across the end. So I think we where Ben is there. So face edge number two, going to come across. Now, the other thing I have done with the piece of wood, this is dead square. I've cut it. I've even used my shooting board to make sure it is nice and square. So cutting gauge, I can come across. And again, easier to have this set on the bench so you can hold it. There, flip it back over, across the back because we're going to cut all the way around this. Back up, 
across the top. So our cutting gauge, and we can be quite firm with this. We're done with. Let's have a look back on, hopefully, on the overhead. Yeah, you can really, yeah, you can. If I bring it up a little bit, other way. There you go. You can see your line all the way around. Nice and parallel. They join up. So as long as I've shot the end of this square of what I want to do, I can project that line all the way around. So that, that aspect of getting the end nice and square to the side, so important. We've done that face edge again. So now we're going to use the mortise gauge. I've got to do wheel at a time. So I'm going to have to use one there. I can come down, sight in where I can come down to. Turn it over, going to do the top one. Now I'm working off my face edge. Going to come down through there. Got to come, and I want to get a line so I can see it when I cut it with the handsaw. I also want to try and get it so you guys can see what we're doing. So pull that up. Got to do the other side. So I turn it over. The whole time though, I'm working off that face edge. I've got that registration point. One there. Cut free. So hopefully, just going to have a quick look. Now you can't see this too well, and I know this is one of the things that worried me when I looked at this the other day. So something I wouldn't normally do. Pencil will work, but it tends to blunten and thicken the line quick. So I've got black pen just to highlight these for you. The problem again with doing pen, it makes things just a little bit thicker, but it will help identify where the lines are so hopefully you'll be able to see things on the camera better going to just change direction for me to so come around there make it easier all right haven't done that as a dead solid line all the way through but you can see the dot lines down the side we've got a line that's better so at least you can see it so we've laid out in reality our tenon where the haunch is i haven't got to worry about yet going to do that in a minute. So the cut out bit on here with a haunch, we can mark out when we cut this off. So first bit now we're going to do is actually do the cutting to create our tannin. Going to put the vice. Sounds sensible, doesn't it? Now what you might not be able to see on there, Ben, can you just go camera two for me? My board, I've got there, our ends, our line. Going to put it in. But look at how I'm putting it in the vice. I'm putting it in at an angle. And the reason I spend a change camera because it will show better what we're doing for a second. He can go overhead in a minute and go end camera. We've got different shots on this. Hopefully, try and give you an idea. My best advice I can give you for this, and if you talk to anyone that does this sort of thing, cut what you can see. That's paramount. Next thing you want something as a saw. You can have whatever you feel comfortable with. So traditional tenon saw. You could have Japanese saw. Doesn't matter. I've got a whole range of different saws we can use. All right. I've got different things in here that we can have. I could do one with each of the saws, maybe just give you an idea. One's quicker than the other. The Japanese saw will be quicker, but I find it a little bit more flexible for me. So, by cutting what I can see, first thing, I've got to get my saw in position. I want to be on the outside line, side of the line. All right. So, I've got a dot point. I'm also going to cut on the side that I can see. So, Ben, could you just go end cam, which I think is four. Okay. My line is there. I'm there. To give you an idea, my hand there, that's in line with where my head is. I'm not going to cut this line because actually I'm cutting the wrong side of it. I've almost got to lean over the saw to see it. So I'm going to do that one. All right. But I think, what well, have you got then, Ben? Go on. That's done. Um, so I've got a question from Mike. <clears throat> He's asking, uh, what's the timber? Is it popular? This is tulip, North American tulip or popular or basswood. So this is just something that we use in here. It works quite nicely. We have quite a good stock of it. Um, it's relatively cheap, but really the fact it works okay. There's no point in going and playing with something too expensive on this sort of thing. We've got a use for this when we finish, maybe. We're going to play around with it. I'll show you what we've been doing with this. But as something to practice with, it has a bit of resistance, quite easy to get hold of. And let's like say, not outrageously expensive. So if you were looking at practicing, good material to go with. 
what I would class as everyday pine, a little bit too soft, can be, and people go, that's great, isn't it? No, it can be unforgiving to try and do the job. Give yourself a chance of something as a bit of resistance to work off so it's not going to splinter out and break out on the back edges. So nice material to work with. Okay, so let's start our cutting. So on here, we've got front shoulder, I've got cut the back shoulder. I'm going to work on the back one. I can get my thumb just off that line. So I want to be on the outside of that line. Start it off. I'm cutting on that corner. So I'm hoping that makes sense. So I'm going to come down to my shoulder line. Don't force the saw. So I've cut down to here. Come around that corner. Now, just going to blow the dust out. I'm going to project the line. I just need to come back just a little bit. Let's just see where you are. So we get our corner point right there. Going to come down through. So I've already got the line coming down the grain on the corner. Projecting in. Now, this is traditional Western style dovetail or tenon saw. It cuts push stroke. Major thing with this body stance, get it out of the way. So my arm will swing over my body. So I'm now stood in front of bench side of that line. If I'm stood too far and almost central on my body, I can't pull the saw back and forwards nicely. And it sounds sensible thing, but I know we're doing this. Some people just don't see that. They don't grasp that aspect. And again, just clearing so I can see where my line is. But now we've actually got quite a long cut. Diagonal. I'm monitoring what's happening on the corner back here. Make sure we don't drift past that line. We want to get a diagonal cut running from corner. To bottom edge, Ben can go camera two just for so in reality. We're coming from the corner there up to this scribe line, which is there to there. That cut now, we don't as much as I'd love to do the cut that's in front of this, which is there and on the front shoulder, it's the wrong side of my body to be cutting. I'd have to move on. So, actually, the easier way on this turn the board round. Yes, it will take you fractionally longer to do all of these but might give you better results on the sawing, so you spend less time cleaning up. So, so there one. let's just check tight. I don't want any movement, got that on the last one, so let's tighten that. Again, I can use my thumb, my nail, gently, onto there. Get my body in line to give me clearance, so my arm that's doing the sawing goes past my ribs, not fouling, it's in a nice straight line. Clear the dust. We're down to our scribe line. Just going to bring things down in the vice just a little bit for me. Having to stand on tiptoes there, but better. And again, we're trying to go from the far corner to the diagonal. That looks good. So on here, if you go back to camera two, Ben, I can see the line that runs up the front here, all the way down the face. And where I'm stood on this back edge here, I can see it down to there. I can't see the back line underneath. On the other one, we've already got the cut that runs up through. So again, now I can start here. I can see my line on the corner that I want to cut. I'm stood the right side of, to so allow my body movement. Again, feet down through. Cutting down the shoulder line, coming down to our line that we put in with the cutting gauge. Project it. So, first of all, we can cut back through what we've done from the other side. And we're now trying to get, just checking where we are, a bit more down there. Scribe. To there. So now, we're actually cutting diagonally again. We've got that from point here 
down to the corner. One more time, we're just going to turn it around. And like I say, it seemed longer. Some of us would oh, just keep going. I haven't got to worry about that. No, no, turn it around. I can see the line I want to be on. I can see where I need to be on there. I get visibly, I can see it with my eye instead of having to lean across the saw. Oh, I pulled out a bit much there. That's better. Just checking the line I've got on the top. That's a weird thing. Let's do this because some of us don't know about this. See if it can find it. There it is. Saw blade go faster, Juice. Do you find the saw is sticking a little bit? A little bit of candle wax can be fantastic for this. Just helps it glide. So again, I'm trying to come down to there and project back to our corner. So I need to come up just a little bit, change the angle of it so I can get to there. Checking my line. Now we should be diagonal now. Okay, so in reality, let's do it on the green side. If we took this off and we could open it up now, you'll find there's a cut that comes across there and there's one that comes down to the other side. So we've still got this bit of material inside to clear out. We've worked either side. So we come across, down to there. We've got this to clear. So now we can put the wood more upright in the vise. I've lost Ben a little bit there. See if I can go there a minute, Ben. Put it upright. I've got a tram track now to follow. And again, coming down. Just checking where we are. So I'm trying to line up with that shoulder line we want to generate. Don't force the saw. One hand. Now I'm going to put this on top, pushing it down. A traditional saw like this has got brass back. It's got enough weight to force the cut for you. Cutting as I push you away from me. Other weird thing I do naturally, this finger. Always put it down the side. I haven't got enough room to get my fingers in here. Four of them hunched up. So one finger comes down the side, helps give me position to get things straight and parallel. So quite an important part. Get this finger down here. Get it to work for you. And some of these things, it's weird how I just pick things up and take that as second nature. I've always done that. Okay. Let's fish this out the vise. So now we have our cut, and we should be pretty much in line with the group. We've got our saw cuts that come down, down to here. There's our shoulder line, a little bit short, but not bad. And hopefully we're quite flat across the bottom of where our shoulder line is across here. Now we've got to do that bit. Now it would be lovely. And I don't know if we can do this. Ben, just go to camera one then. This will be fun. I'm going to put this back in here while you do that. So this is the board we used a while back for each bit, the halving joint, I think. I coloured it in with a pencil, which you'll see in a minute. Just turn it up. Now, it'd be lovely if I could get you to put your hands up as a vote on this bit, because I'd love to know what you guys would do here now. Would you just take your hands off to it and cut off that line and then maybe try and chisel it back, or maybe reach up and get your nice shoulder plane and shoot across it. How would you do it? So, okay, this goes back to when we started really doing some of the woodwork joints with you. What did I show you? Okay, I'm going to get the tools we need for this, a couple of things. And the reason I put the board up on the bench like we are now, hopefully you'll see it better. So, we're going to go back to these. So, Ben, let's have a look. Where are we? There we are. Now, that's good because I can see where he is now. He's a bit square. Okay. Engineer square. I tend to love using engineering squares. I'm not a great fan of a square that's got a wooden stop. I like engineering squares. It goes on. Do you fact I know the corner is square? 
and we scribed off at Shibby Square. Other major tool, Japanese marking knife. I'm working on my face edge and the top edge. Put that in. I've got my scribe line. You can't see it. I can feel it if I do that with the knife. Drops in. Just slide along. There it is. Bring it up. Clamp it in. I think you can see my fingers working. The ones on the back here gripping the square, pulling it towards me. Fingertip on the top, holding it down. Thumb acting as the clamp on the back edge, holding the timber. Got that there. I can bring my knife down. Exactly lined up with that groove. The reason I'm using a Japanese marking knife, the back edge that I'm resting against the stock of the square is flat. And I don't know if you can remember when I said about this, if you put this down, you'll find the knife isn't straight. It has a kink on the top. So I can bounce it. So the last bit of it is designed to be angled out. Why? To help give you clearance now, to help you guys see what I'm doing. I'm going to move the board along a little bit. We've still got to work off face edge. So I'm going to overturn things over, which is difficult for me. If I bring it round, face edge is here, get to there. I've got to change my grip a little bit. My thumb this time is going to work. We're going to find our edge. Better to come up to the far side, drop the knife in onto there. Get it up parallel, clamp it in place. Don't go too hard with the first groove. So don't go forcing it. Give yourself time and then extend it. I'm really using the tip. So if you drop this on the floor with a knife, you need to do a little bit of restoration. I tend to look after these. We now have quite a deep scribe line, both sides. You can see that better. Bring our board back so I can get it in position so you guys can see a bit more. I'm going to use a G clamp. Hold the board down. Out there. Wood chisel. What do we want? Something sharp. So 20 mil will be good. Finger and thumb on here. You can see our line across there. We're going to go back to that knife wall. So just working along. The knife line acts as the scribe point. If you watch the chisel action, I'm not actually pushing forward, tending to push sideways a little bit. My thumb is doing the work, my right hand holding things up. Break the fibers off. Go do one more. If it was a really narrow shoulder, as in depth of cut, I've got it this way now, could even be possible to chisel it back and then go back in with the knife. I'm going to go back in with the knife in a minute, sever these off and work it down to create your shoulder. So you can see that it's a bit sticky there. Top edge. I'm going to get my knife back in. Clip it on that hook. Gotcha. I know my clamp was going to create me problems there. Turn it over. That's it. So a knife I can put up against that wall we've already cut. Clamp it back in place. Again, not too much pressure. So I use the back of the knife as the stop point to give me the accuracy of where I want to be. Keep it nice and upright. And what we should be able to do, pull those fibres out of the way. Got a little bit just in here. And again, this is one of these other weird and wonderful things. But people go, yeah, but that takes time. Okay. This might take a little bit of time now. But this is going to guarantee I don't need to clean up the shoulder line after. And that's fiddly. Nice straight groove. Let's go a little bit deeper. I probably got enough where we were, but got it set up. Nice sharp chisel. So much easier. I mean, for the point of view of you guys, I mean, you can see the back of this nice and a bit shine. Do I sharpen stuff before I come and do this? You bet. I want things to work. Quick touch up can be really good. So squared up again, using the back of the knife. Just draw along, want to sever those fibers that are just sat in the bottom of this groove. Clean them out. Good. Okay, let's just have a quick look. 
hoping if I get my up in position, you can see the groove now. Nicely down through there. That looked good. So we've got now we've got something that's going to help us. So I'm going to sit this back on, clamp it back in place. Again, the board really on the bench originally was done just to help see things for the camera and video, give us a good position. But so useful to have. It means I've got a good way of clamping things down, holding it. I went over with my pencil earlier, so you, you can see the colour change between the work and the board. I went to art college. Okay, so I'm going to cut these off. So into the grove. Now, give you an idea. My left hand there. I can do this. Now, Ben, can you go overhead? Let's just see where we are. I might need to move things about for you. Look at that. I can come up to. I reckon just for the guys and see, I'm trying to show you how simple this is going to make this. I've come a bit further up there. I can lock that off. I can close that gap so I can see exactly where I'm square. Up to there. Nice and parallel. So the saw is set all the way across. Don't need too much effort to get it started. Nice and light. So I've got something now to guide the saw on that shoulder line. Just checking where we are. So my left hand, just feeling what's happening. That can appeal up yet. Checking my lines. We don't want to cut the tenon in half. We're trying to keep the structural strength. I can use my saw just to put back in, then just go overhead again. Look, on here I'm looking at where the saw will come to the laden. Not quite deep enough here. I'm coming to that point. A little bit off. So when we were in the vice there, the feet didn't quite go deep enough. We can easily do it now. I've got something to push against with the board. Just checking where that is. That looks better. Back into there. Got movement now. It's good. Let's do one more on there, I reckon. Nearly. Try not to break it off. Want to cut it off, but not go too deep. So we've got our shoulder. Got one. Got to do the other side. Flip it over. Clamp it back down. We can do exactly the same. We put the saw in. So we rolled it, get it square. Nice and gently feed in. Just starting to have a look to where things are. I'm going to check in here again now. So we can slide in. Again, one a bit more off. Easier to sight this from where it was in the voice. Just to extend that in. We've got a nice groove to sit in generating by the cuts we did with it vertical. A little bit to go there now. Check if there's any movement. Okay. So you take those off. So it gives you an idea of how clean we can get that. These should be nice and straight already. Let's have a quick look on there. That's good. So the less work we've got to do to those shoulders, the better. Now we want to clean up our thickness here. Got to get it to fit. If I can get my position right. Let's put them there. So we need to clean up and make sure this fits. Should be quite straight. I've still just got the edge of, which is why you can see a little bit of black on here, I expect. Just a little bit there. A little bit of that pencil or pen line just remaining there. All right, so we've got to clean those up. So let's just have a move about. Ben's got another question for me, so let's have a look. Um, so Martin would just like to know what size the marking knife was. The one I use in here is 15 mil. Okay, I really like why it's, it's thick enough to hold. Nice width, easy to do. These are hollow ground on the back. Uh, I think you can probably see the shiny bit. And there, yeah, there, yeah, that. so it's hollow ground from back in here. Why hollow ground it? Because then, actually, when you flatten the back, you're only flattening the bit on the tip. Like I said, they're not straight, and it really, I've read reviews on these that 
People complain they're not straight. It's not meant to be. I can get this kick on here. It's difficult to show you on here, but I can get it to move. So the last little bit, the last, that's about that much, slightly bent out. It's designed to clear it away from the workpiece to give you access to get into that point. Quite an important part. Right then. So which number were we working on? Quite easy. We're down here. Number two. So we need to get this down to an equal thickness and make sure it's going to fit. First thing then we need to do, clear some of the stuff. Find our joint number. So I'm going to come around the end here. Number two is that. So this needs to go in here. All right. Not quite. Nearly. A little bit of work to get. You could use a number of different things for this. Take the clamp, going to clamp it back in place. So again, the board works nicely for this. Let's have a look and see what we have. We could go with, which is what it's really traditionally for, shoulder plane. Quite nice. Problem I find with shoulder plane, you've got no depth adjustment. You take a cut. So it does mean you're lots of testing. Now, on what we're doing here, there is, and I'm cutting eight tenons, and I want them all to be pretty much exactly the same. So would it be nice of having some way of setting up and doing exactly the same? So Ben, let's have a look on camera one a minute. Let's see what we can do. Get a few things into play that I've got out. Favorite thing to do this, and it's not really what it's intended for in ways. Router plane, a bit specialized, but we have depth adjustment on this so we can get it to where we need to be. You could even have a small one. What I've done on here, the black collar that's right on the top here, I've put on. So I can actually set this up to do my cut as my maximum. Let's just set it up for this. I could bring the collar, it's got a grub screw and the bar is square. I can bring that down, lock it in place. Why do I want that? That gives me a reset point. I could easily move it up and down. But now I've got somewhere to set it back onto. I've got to tighten the screwdriver back up. Might be a bit heavy. Yeah. So I'm right down at my depth. I want to come up a little bit. So easier to do if I hold it sideways. I can do exactly the same with the nice big line. Nielsen one that's got a fine adjuster. A bit too much up. So there. Got to have somewhere to start. Then we go down again. A little bit more. I'm going to stick with this just for a second, get it to work for you. Point adjuster. And that reset point's quite useful to have. So the jewelry we're using the outer plane, you can bridge off of the side material. And chisel across. It won't attack the shoulder line that we've got that's nice and square. It will clean up the bottom of the saw cut, but it won't damage that shoulder. Only place I have got to watch is the back corners because I don't want to break those fibers off. So I turn it around and pull it towards me. Okay, one side. I'm going to stick with that for a minute. Turn it over. Need to do a little bit here. I know it comes up on the back edge. So exactly the same. Looks heavy there, look. Might need to bring it up again. I'm not going to manage all that. I'm not feeling that strong this afternoon. We're not down to our depth, maximum depth at the moment, so it won't hurt. And so bigger router plane's nice so you get more support off the side. I point here. Got to get into that corner a minute, but I need to start test fitting this. So number two, up on there, drop it in. Still a bit tight. Good. That's what I want to know. Because my best advice on anything like this, it's easy to take more material off. It's not so easy to put it back. So you can see where that 
drill collar stuck, and we used the drill collars last week on the drill bit when we were drilling out the mortises, quite useful because now we're down to our depth of cut. Work across. Gonna flip them over again to the other side. Wanna keep this equal and central. That's not bad there. How much have we gotta go? Tiny bit. So let's do that. We're gonna check. Our cut first, though. So let's just see where we are. Ooh, I don't know. I might go. I'm going to leave it there. If you've got a minute amount to remove, and you think back to some of the other stuff we've been going over with you, files are awesome stuff. Japanese file. I love these for this because this gives me an easy way. I'm just cleaning up. This has got no cut on the side, so again, I can get right into that shoulder, clean that in, flip it over, do the same the other side, just smooth things off. So if you've got a small amount to blend in, really good way of working. So let's have a look. Right, okay, up to there. Let's clear some stuff again then. Drill colours can go out the way, and down to there. Get rid of the debris. I want to get rid of the dust and stuff. We start denting the components as we go. So, bench dusting brush really good for this. Let's have a look. I've got to move things down, which is what I wanted to know. I've got a couple of marks on here we need. And again, we could do this pencil. That one there, I know is that. So that lines up with the pencil line here. You could even, if you want to do there, you could come off with a square if you like. I'm going to mark it up. I even know, and this is going back to what we did last week, it is the depth of my square. So when we laid that out, we used the bar of the square as a depth. So I could even get quite crude and go, that's that. How deep this way? So this is so we can cut the haunch. How did we lay out the haunch? I raised the leg on two bits of 3.8 or 9mm MDF. So I raised it up, did that cut. Again, if you're not sure, go back, have a look. So on here, I can use a bit of MDF, get my head out of the way. I can draw down there. That gives me a line as a guide. So making things nice, quick and easy to cut those out. Put them back in there. What have we got? So down there. Want to be on the waist side of my line or dead on it. Not help myself and my vice set up at the moment, really. Don't know, Ben, if you're going to see this. You might have to go from the front, I think. I've got to clear the, the vice. I don't want to cut, cut the bench in half. I've done that before. Again, just trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm trying to do. Bit, bit of natural. I wanted to turn it right round, but then I'd be out of shot. That wouldn't help you. Good. So we've taken off that little corner. The good news is, they're the same. So I've got one there, and I've got one down the other end. Fantastic. But there's nothing worse than cutting the wrong ones off. Now we need to see if it fits. Now this still shouldn't quite fit in. It's a little bit loose than I like, but okay. When we did, I'll bring it back into there. I think you can see it from there, but an overhead, I think. Okay, good. When we did the measurement for the layout of the pencil line, which is down here, we put the board on, but I raised it up. So again, this is in the mortise side of this cut. So I need that bit. We raised the legs up when we marked them last week on a steel ruler. 
So I can do exactly the same one here. I need to take a minute amount off the bottom of the talon on here. All right. So this is the scrap bit off the end of it. So it's the same width. Just going to clamp those two together. Got the ruler in under the workpiece. So it's raising it up by the thickness of the ruler. I then want just something to hold things for me, make it easier. So I'm going to put a bigger clamp down in there. So we've got bigger G clamp down in the back here. The two clamping it together are steps. So in reality, that's the thickness of the ruler stopping it. So this is our workpiece. This is our guide block. Again, we're not going to do it all in one heavy cut. I'm going to pair this off, slice through those fibers, working it back. Not pushing too hard. Get there. Then can you just go camera two? You can see it there beautifully. So this is our fibre we've cut, nice and clean and under here. Those fibres lift off. We've already got a scribe point for those from where we did the cutting gauge. So I can bring it forward, drop it in, push it down lightly, cut that off. So we paired that little bit off. Now the reason for doing that little bit, and it's unusual, it covers any damage we might have done using the mortise chisel. Let's just grab one. As a crowbar in here. We tend to round this corner. So by actually having that little step, can get over that aspect. Quite useful little tip. So hopefully two will come together. Let's have a quick look. Now push. That's not bad. Now, let's have a quick look on what we have. Need to adjust things. Got a little bit on the top I want to get. I have a tiny bit in the bottom of the mortise in there. I'm going to push down. Ugh. Okay. So I need fraction off of, trying to figure out which way I can show you best, this face. I've still got my pen line. want to bring it up a little bit. I'm going to change that. I want to pair it nice and square, and it sounds a bit weird. Other place I'm just going to check as well, whilst I've got this here. Number two, check we're on the right joint. That one there. Okay. So I need a little bit off of this face and a bit off the top of the haunch. Still got my line off the haunch, so I know I need to lose a fraction, and it's minute. I like to have something as a pairing block. So this is something I made up ages ago. So we have a top rail, 40 mil, two bits of plywood laminated together. Plywood's nice to work with, it doesn't move. Side rail, I've got a rebate groove, they're glued together. Makes right angle, put it on. I then will need, uh, that one we might get away with. Sorry, Ben, you're going to have to go probably two. The only bit that might not reach on the camera. I've got to do it this side because... My side rail, this one, laid against the side of the bit of wood. Top, and I'm sorry it's upside down the camera, but you get the idea. Goes there. We can clamp that all in the vise. Adjustment tool for height. And go with mullet. And I'm sighting through now, looking at what I've got to take off here. chisel again don't go forcing it pair it along so my fingers on here can keep that down my handle is being controlled by the right hand and how much force take a layer off going to and i want to turn that round to get in there i'm going to go back in the vice i said i want to bring this up as well there, turn round. Back to the legs. 
on here, we have number two on there. So I go in, then pull it up. I want to get it flush with the top. That's good. Nice on there. Just going to drop this over. Just want to check the other thing. That looks clear. I've got a little bit, tiny gap on there, not much. Can bring this together. And then, hopefully, I'm going to answer Ben's question. We got Ben. So we've got a question from Frederick. He's asking, is it a rule or a ruler? Um, he said he if thought... The rulers all work upstairs. I just work <laughs> here. We know this. We've had this conversation. That the rulers are upstairs. We just do what we're told. Come on. <laughs> yeah. um, is there yeah. a rule? Sorry. He's a saying ruler, uh, yes. a ruler sits on a throne. Right. A ruler what? <laughs> sits on the throne. Like the queen. <laughs> we, we, we have a ruler like that. Yeah, probably. Uh-oh. So, sorry. Obviously, this is a, a rule, okay? And uh, I forget another one is that that's rulers. Okay, oh, no. Let's get out of this before I get in trouble. Okay, um, so hopefully if you look at our oh, like, if you've got to push anything together, I've right, got a little bit there. I think, let me just stretch a minute, Ben. That might be better. Try that now, mate. That's good. If you've got to squeeze anything together and you're trying to do a joint, resist your mallet or your hammer. Get something as a clamp. You can go with whatever you have. I, I'm quite a sash clamp fan still. Put it on. You want to get it parallel to the workpiece. No point in having it angled. It will pull things at an angle. I could also actually on here, I'm going to put those in. I've got a little bit. I wonder if I've got two more of those. Yeah, okay. Just want to bring it up. So the clamp is pushing. So I'm just raising up a couple of little bits of wood underneath. So the clamp bar now is sat accurately onto. It's a camera two band just for a sec. Onto here. I don't want it angled up in the air one side or the other. I want to get it sat on the legs. If you needed to push the joint together, a clamp is a better way of feeling how it is being pushed together than clouting it with your hammer. The problem with doing this with a hammer, if the joint fits too firm, you can split the mortise. And you'll get a crack in it. I need to come up to me a little bit. Get my block. So I put a couple of bits of plywood down the side here. I can get this one back up, will be good. There it is. Now again, the two bits of plywood, I'm trying to get level with this rail. There's no point in me having it at the bottom of the square. I want it near the top, in line with what we've actually put in together. Clamp it up. See how things come together. Next important bit on here, then I start looking at my shoulder line. Now the joint we've just done, number two is down here, right? So let's just play a minute now. Not meant to do this, but those of you who do your woodwork joint, what do you reckon? Can you see a gap? Doesn't look bad to me, does it? Uh, let's take a gamble now, because I haven't looked at this. Number two. Can you see number two there, Ben? Yeah, good. Oh, swing it around. That's the inside. All right. So what I'm trying to get over with that. Take those off. Then you can go camera one for me. Fantastic. That simple trick involving a square, a knife, and creating that, that knife wall, the break line, cutting it two or three times to give you a deep groove that you can then literally bring your saw into and rest against gives you a really accurate start point. It's amazing. that, And then no fiddling around trying to adjust your shoulders. Um, and I have been there, and the kind of the reason that I have these made up when I did them was the fact it was a way of adjusting the shoulder. If I needed to, I could actually use a chisel and pair the shoulders back. So it can be really good. So a bit of plywood can be good as a, a setup point. All right, so that would go on. We can clamp it on. But it does allow me to pair the shoulders. But... 
if you can get away from that scenario of having to take a chisel to the shoulder line, you can cut it accurately to start with. Makes life so much easier because there is nothing worse than chasing the shoulder line that you get to fit this side and you take them more off. You turn it over to the inside and you finally find, oh, right, there's a gap. Oh, I've got to take more off the front. And you chase it. You get smaller and smaller. Things become, all right? The other nice thing we're using, the break wall, the knife wall, it gives you an accurate line to cut to with your saw. You're not drifting back over it. And then again, making the rail shorter. So that simple thing of using a marking knife, and like I say, has to be single bevel, or you're going to end up with V, which isn't going to work as well. Single bevel, flat back, fantastic. But that control will control how your saw will function to give you that straight shoulder. And the shoulder lines I know with doing this sort of thing has been the, the sticking point for some of the students. But if you get that, that knife wall nicely, fantastic really does work effectively to give you a good start point. You can't ask better than that as a shoulder. The clamp, we're not mega tight. We've got a bit of pressure. We brought it together like it's going to be when we glue it up. Great. We set those measuring points. The other major point though with that, that knife wall, I suppose, you've got to get the end square. Um, when we've done different things, you've seen me use the shooting board. Such an easy way of going. Shoot the ends of the board square, check it square, get the two the same on this if we're going to make a table. Fantastic. All right. So hopefully not too much of a nag. I think you can see how simple you can do your tenants. You can knock them out quite effectively. Things like the router plane, really good. I went with a small one. I've been doing the line else one, but try to give you an idea. Something as a collar stop if you want to make them all the same. Better way of going. So this is the ones we use on the drill bits, but it just fits on the top. If you want one, I'm just going to fish them off. So drill collar, that one. Just want to pick it off there. So that will fit on. So the cutter is there. So if you've got this sort of thing, this is an old Stanley one. All right, we do the rider ones, which is, this is so this is a copy of the Stanley. So that collar fits on. I can clamp it up on the square, but it gives me a reset point. So if I'm doing, in reality, eight tenons for a table, I've got a stop point. So I can bring it up a little bit, lock it off on the brass fixing, do your cuts, gently lower it down to get down to that maximum cut. All right, hopefully we're done. I was kind of dreading this, all right? Hand cut tenons. I'm surprised no one said, you've got a bandsaw? No, not in here. I wish. I'm not allowed a bandsaw. So, Ben, you got any more questions? I think we're probably, uh, all right, good, all right. Don't get money questions from my hand tool work. I ever talk too much or there's no one watching. I don't know. Maybe there is. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. So the guys that are out there, hope it's been informative. You know where you can contact us. Email us if you've got any questions or things or I haven't explained stuff. If you enjoyed it, give us the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. we get more of these. We're going to look at what we're doing with these. All right, what I can use these for. I've got an idea. Tomorrow, Ben's going to do another scroll saw project for you. Special key ring wreck. So we look forward to seeing you. Another working wisdom. Thanks.